Here to discuss this now is the man who sponsored that resolution and made it possible to pass at last week's RNC meeting, David Bossie, the founder of the watchdog group Citizens United and a longtime advisor to former President Donald Trump. Dave, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. There's an amazing backstory of not only how this resolution came to pay, but also how it got to pass. A lot of work. I know you worked day and night for several days. Tell us uh, what happened and, and why it's good for the country. Well, it, it's important. It's an important conversation to have for sure. You know, it, I'm shocked by the weakness of Republican leaders uh, in not calling out this committee. This is an illegitimate committee. Uh, in the history of the United States, there's never been that I can find. And John, you know, I know a little I have a little bit of background in this, but I can't find another committee uh, that was nine to nothing. OK, really, this is seven to so-called two Republicans, but seven to two, even even if you went with those numbers where it is taken seriously in the House or in the Senate, in the history of the United States, the credibility of this committee would be called into question at every turn because it is just, it has become an, uh, a, an inquisition, not an investigation. It is hauling uh, before people who were not there, not even in Washington on January 6th. This is, this is an attack on, on the Democrats, uh, political enemies, uh, in an order to attack President Trump. This is the third impeachment. Uh, and, and that's really what this is about. And I felt uh, that I couldn't allow, uh, you know, this meeting to pass without having the conversation about Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. And I was pleasantly surprised that my colleagues on the RNC overwhelmingly supported this resolution. I'm just going to speak candidly here because I think that there are a lot of members of the Republican base who have lost faith in the RNC. Uh, and I know that this took time for you to percolate and actually get it passed. Did you receive pushback? I know you said it had unanimous support, but I've got to imagine you had pushback from a lot of people. You know, I had, I had a lot of questions, obviously, about why we should do this and how, you know, is it the right thing to do? Is it the right language? Uh, and I was totally open to, uh, you know, changing, uh, you know, the resolution and making it uh, because having it be having it pass nearly unanimously. We had a few dissenters, but nearly unanimously was important. So, you know, it, it just like in anything else, uh, you have a conversation, you change a little bit here and a little bit there and it got better. Um, and, and I got to tell you, you know, I've been hearing from members, uh, you know, across the country all, for the last many, many days since since this took place last week, uh, you know, just at your average Republican voter uh, to other RNC members. And they are so glad we did this. Yeah, that, we've heard the same. We've had a lot of people on this show saying how glad they were that the party spoke with one voice. Then the vote occurs. And then there's this guy, Mitch McConnell, in the Senate who thinks, ah, this is a bad idea. Talk about the disconnect that Mitch McConnell has, not only with his own uh, conference, but really the base of the party right now. It's as though he doesn't understand the Republican Party that he leads these days. It, it, it's disappointing uh, that he would sound like that. But but you know these leaders they they get into this Washington bubble right, and they forget who they represent, and they forget the forgotten men and women across this country uh, that they are there to represent. There and, and, and that's one of the reasons that Donald Trump got elected. Uh, in the first place in 2016, because Washington, D.C. had forgotten so many Americans, uh, those hardworking Americans that, that Donald Trump spoke to. Look, the January 6th committee isn't really a very small part of what they're talking about is the violence of that day. OK, what they are really attacking is the process, the constitutional questions, the legal questions the litigation attempts, the alternative electors, all of those things that the Trump White House, the Trump campaign had every right to do, to exhaust, to make sure that everything was done uh, to the best of their ability to make sure this election was fair and free. And we clearly know it wasn't. So th that's what the American people every single week, every month that has gone by in the last year, the American people side more and more with President Trump on whether the election was was fair. And I think that that's 
now resonating. And the leadership in Washington, D.C. misses that. Um, we weren't, you know, the RNC and Republicans always have to qualify it. Oh, we, we don't we, we, we obviously don't stand for violence. Obviously, we don't. Obviously, you know, the RNC had a pipe bomb out in front of it. They're, 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 that's not what this is about. It's about the 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 widow that is in Michigan that was an alternative uh, on, a, on an alternate slate of electors who wasn't in Washington, D.C. She was actually in Florida on January 6th, and she's being hauled before this committee. That's what this is about. And so uh, that's what this censure was about. That's what Liz Cheney and, and Adam Kinzinger don't understand, uh, is that that's why the Republicans are so angry with them for propping up, becoming a Pelosi puppet. And that's, that's what Mitch McConnell, uh, quite honestly, forgets as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and you're right. Like we it's incredible to see that needle moving further in the direction of skepticism about a free and fair election. And it definitely wasn't free in terms of dollars and cents either, because Mark Zuckerberg funneled hundreds of million dollars to candidates and judges. My question is, if Democrats are going to keep pulling dirty tricks like this and founding finding ways to circumvent the system, should we be doing the same thing? Well, you know, I, I let me just say. What Zuckerberg did uh, is unprecedented. Over $400 million he spent on a Democrat get out the vote operation. That's what big tech has been doing, strangling Donald Trump on one hand for the last five years, and on the other hand, financing uh, his defeat, making sure that Joe Biden was elected. Uh, and so, and doing it through C3s, I might add, who, which are supposed to be nonpartisan. Uh, so it's going to be it's, it's very interesting. Ten states so far, 10 states have changed their laws to make sure that what Zuckerberg did in 2020 is not ever allowed to happen again. So I think we're making some progress. But five states passed the laws, uh, the same those same laws and and Democrat governors vetoed it. Surprise, surprise, because they know they want to do it again. Yeah, Michigan and Wisconsin among them. we got about 90 seconds left, Dave. Real question, you had a very powerful column recently on the state of censorship and cancel culture in America. Everything from Joe Rogan to, uh, well, uh, being able to talk about election concerns. Tell us a little bit about how you think this country overcomes this incredible moment of censorship in our history. It's remarkable that uh, Joe Rogan, who is an incredibly successful, I don't, I don't know the gentleman, but you know, the, the most successful podcast in America at, at this point, you know, and you have Neil Young and these other 1960s and 70s rock stars, these musicians who made their careers, wrote songs, taking on the man, fighting the government, telling the American people, don't believe the government, don't believe anyone over 30. OK, remember those days that 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 is what. Joe Rogan is now saying, and Neil Young is now the man. Neil Young has become a spokesman for the government. It is outrageous that these people who have made untold millions, fortunes, in questioning the government. Imagine if Neil Young and these folks had been canceled, okay, by Richard Nixon. I mean, you know, Neil Young has become Richard Nixon, and Joe Rogan has become... Uh, uh, Neil Young. I mean, it's, it's the world is an upside down place, guys. And I think that the American people need to think long and hard about uh, about the cancel culture that we're in, uh, because it's a dangerous, slippery slope.